Amidst the uncertainty awaiting them at sea, flotilla passengers are now facing a new challenge even before setting sail. The Greek government has refused to grant permission for the audacity of hope and two other ships leaving port, citing anonymous complaints that later turn out to come from an Israeli group. The Greek government's move comes amidst heavy international pressure to resolve a fiscal crisis that sparked massive protest and a general strike scheduled for this week. The Israeli government, meanwhile, is also warning journalists not to cover the aid mission. On Sunday, Israel said reporters who board Gaza-bound ships will be barred from Israel for 10 years and have their equipment seized. In response, the Foreign Press Association said the warning, quote, sends a chilling message to the international media and raises serious questions about Israel's commitment to freedom of the press. On Twitter, former U.S. State Department spokesperson P.J. Crowley responded, quote, Israel is working against its own self-interest by pressuring journalists not to cover the Gaza flotilla, clearly a newsworthy event, he tweeted. Well, Democracy Now! is in Athens right now with our exclusive report. Democracy Now! producer Aaron Mate is in Greece covering the journey of the audacity of hope. We are in Athens, Greece, where delegates from across the U.S. have gathered to board the Audacity of Hope. It's one of ten ships in the Freedom Flotilla to the aid mission to the Gaza Strip. But the journey is facing uncertainty. The Greek government is facing heavy pressure to thwart the aid mission. And the State Department is calling on the Audacity of Hope to abandon its voyage, just issuing a statement calling it provocative and dangerous. Well, we spoke to some of the delegates that are going to be boarding the ship and asked for their response. I'm Jane Hirschman. I'm one of the organizers of the U.S. boat to Gaza, called the Audacity of Hope. We're here tonight, as you see, with not only our delegation, but delegations from all over the country. We're part of the International Freedom Flotilla Stay Human. We are going to sail to Gaza. We are over 22 countries and 10 ships that are going. So right now, the Greek government is facing a huge internal revolt. There's protests every day, strikes for this week. Are you concerned that opponents of the flotilla are going to exploit that to try to pressure the Greek government to stop the sailing? Yes, I think that's happening right now. You know, our boat right now is ready to go, as I said. There has been a complaint that's been, you know, lodged against our boat. It's totally bogus. And um, they were trying to slow down the process. Tomorrow our lawyer is going to try to deal with it. And we hope that we will be sailing very, very soon. The State Department is calling the flotilla provocative. It's urging Americans not to take part. What's your response? Well, I think we should see, turn that around a little and ask the uh, State Department who's being provocative when a group of unarmed civilians, civil society, the civil society, is going to a country that's been totally under siege, where this highest unemployment in the world is in Gaza, when they don't have uh, sanitary water conditions, they don't have medicines. And, and you really have to ask, being occupied, which is the country that's really being provocative? And I think that's Israel. And of course, the United States colludes in that because we give Israel $3 billion a year of our tax money to do this to the people of Gaza. Now, you're Jewish. I'm seeing a lot of Jews here. Are there any non-Jews here? 25 percent of this boat, of the delegates on this boat, are Jewish, yes. And there's a reason for that, because we want to say to the world that the Israeli government does not speak in our name. My name is Ray McGovern, and uh, I've, I've seldom met uh, 35 closer friends now, and they're really eager to get on that bo boat to get to Gaza. What Barack Obama wants to avoid is having to decide do I call Netanyahu and risk being rebuffed, as he is accustomed to doing, or do I just let uh, these Americans uh, uh, suffer whatever fate awaits them at the hands of the uh, Israeli Navy? Tough decision. That's why they're focusing on Greece, to make sure that we never leave here, lest he have to face that decision. Never. Never, ever was it our intention to sail into Israeli waters, okay? Gazan waters are Gazan waters under Israeli law because they pretend not to be an occupying power anymore. So either we go into Gaza waters, where we cannot be intercepted under international law, or um, the Israelis say, well, no, we were only kidding about not occupying Gaza. We still occupy Gaza. Then the Israelis do 
have a have a, a right to interdict arms traffic. Now, you know, we're bearing letters, okay? My grandfather from Ireland, he was a letter carrier. So is my other grandfather. It's very much in my tradition. We're carrying letters. Now, what in God's name can letters, how can they letters, these letters be considered uh, a threat to, uh, to the security of Israel? I'm Medea Benjamin with the group uh, Code Pink. I'm from Washington, D.C. This is not a provocation. This is following the footsteps of Dr. Martin Luther King. It's following the footsteps of Mahatma Gandhi. It's following the footsteps of Palestinians who resist nonviolently uh, day after day. And it's in a great global tradition of standing up against injustice. Six members of Congress have uh, signed a letter asking the U.S. government to protect the passengers. What do you want from the White House, from Congress, from the State Department? Well, first I want to say that when you look around here at representatives from other organizations, they have members of their parliament going with them. There is a member of the Spanish parliament here, European parliament here, Swiss parliament, uh, Norwegian parliament, and they ask us, how many members of your Congress are going on this U.S. delegation? And I laugh because I'm so ashamed to even say, not only is there not one member going, but we didn't even bother asking any of them to come because we knew it would be impossible. It was hard enough to get six people to sign a letter that said that uh, our government should protect us. And we are U.S. citizens, you know. So it's, uh, it is so embarrassing when you see how far uh, removed our government is compared to other governments around the world in standing up for what we say that we go to war for in Iraq or in Libya, uh, people's basic human rights.